Welcome to part two, the lesson on 8.3, which is dividing monomials. We're going to look at the second property that's introduced in this section, and it's called powers of a fraction property, which really is just a power of a quotient. So you can see we've got two bases in our parentheses, x divided by y, and we're going to raise it to some power m. What we want to do is basically distribute that exponent to each of the bases within that parentheses. So on top, I'm going to have x to the m. And on the bottom, we're going to have y to the m. So it's very similar to multiplication. So the key phrase you would want to write down here is distribute the exponent to the numerator and denominator. And that goes for every base. Um, with these first couple problems, we're just going to have one base in the numerator and one base in the denominator. But as we work on more complicated examples, you'll have multiple bases. So you'll have to distribute that exponent to everything in the numerator and everything in the denominator. So let's see how this works here. If you were to see this first problem, 3 fourths squared, many of you would start to panic because how do you deal with a fraction? But if we just apply this property, it becomes very easy. So you give that 2 exponent to the numerator, so that becomes 3 squared, and you do the same thing in the denominator, 4 squared. And then just evaluate the numerator and the denominator independently. So on top, 3 squared is 9, and on the bottom, 4 squared is 16. Number two is the same way. Distribute that three to both the top and the bottom. And these we're not going to leave an exponent form. We are going to expand these out. So five to the third will give us 125. And eight to the third will give us 512. Moving on to example three. The only difference here is we have a variable, which actually makes it a little bit easier because we don't have to evaluate anything. You distribute the six. We have x to the 6 over 2 to the 6. Expand that out. So x to the 6. And then here's where you would type in 2 to the 6 in your calculator. And we would end up with 64. Number 4 is going to combo some of the properties that you already know about. So the first thing you would do is you would take x to the 6 in the numerator and raise that to the second power. And you'll recall that we multiply those exponents because it is a power to a power. We're going to do the same thing in the denominator. And then you just simplify. So we end up with x to the 12th over y to the 6th. Now we have some more complicated examples where we have multiple bases in the numerator and the denominator. We are still going to apply the property in the same way. So on top, I'm going to give that 2 to both the 5 and the x. So we have 5 squared and x squared. And we're jumping ahead here. It doesn't matter what order we do it in here. Um, in the denominator then, the 2 also gets that exponent of 2. So another way to think about this is just splitting apart the coefficients and the variables. Um, the bottom line is though every base inside that parenthesis has to get that exponent. So now we work on simplifying a little bit. 5 squared is 25. 2 squared is 4, so I have 25 fourths. And just leave it like that. Don't mess around with a decimal or an improper fraction or anything. Just leave it as 25 fourths. And then the x squared and the y squared, those are not like bases. So I really can't do anything to simplify those. So they just stay put. The x squared is going to stay in the numerator, and the y squared is going to stay in the denominator. So let's look ahead to number 6. Very similar problem. We're going to start by giving that 3 to each of the bases. And we'll start with the coefficients. So I've got 3 to the 3rd over 7 to the 3rd. And then I can go ahead to do the variables. Now here we're going to have that power to a power situation again, which means we have to multiply those exponents. So x to the 6 to the 3rd is going to be x to the 6 times 3. And in the denominator, y to the 3rd to the 3 is going to be y to the 3 times 3. So we go ahead and simplify, and feel free to use your calculator here. You're not necessarily expected to have all these powers memorized. So 3 to the 3rd is going to give us 27. And then in the numerator for the x, we've got x to the 18th. We just multiplied those exponents. Um, 7 to the 3rd gives us 343. And then y to the 9th. There's no need to reduce because 27 and 343 will not have any common factors because 3 and 7 didn't have any common factors. And again, x and y are not like bases, so we can't do anything with those. All right, number 7. You have two options here. Um, you can either start by distributing that 2 to everything in the numerator and everything in the denominator, or you can reduce first. Um, so let's 
start by distributing, and then at the end we'll show you how to reduce first. So we're going to take that 2 and we're going to distribute it to everything in the numerator. So it's 9 to the 2nd. X to the 10th, we're just going to go ahead and multiply right away. Same thing for the Y. We're going to go ahead and multiply. So Y to the 8th. And then in the denominator, it'd be Y to the 2nd. Now we're not done. We have a couple things left to do. The 9 to the 2nd gets simplified to 81. And I'm just going to put that over 1 because I don't have any coefficients in the denominator, but I want to kind of separate my like terms here. Now I'm going to go on to the X's, and I've got X to the 10th. So I don't have any other X's. I can put that over 1 as well. And then now I'm looking at my Y's. And these Y's, because I have Y's on top and Y's on the bottom, those have to be simplified. So if you recall our property that we learned in a previous lesson, when you're dividing with exponents, you just subtract. So we're going to do y to the 8 minus 2, which will give us y to the 6. So then we can go ahead and just multiply everything and get our final answer. So it's 81, x to the 10th, y to the 6. Now I had mentioned something about reducing first. If you look at our original problem in the parentheses, if you just kind of circle the y to the 4th over the y right away, um, I could have reduced those to start with. And then my new problem would become 9x to the 5th, y to the 3rd. If I would have subtracted those exponents right away, I could simplify the problem. Now, that's all in parentheses still, and all of that's going to get the second power. So this might be a little bit quicker for you, because 9 squared is still going to give us 81. You multiply those powers to get x to the 10th, and you multiply the powers on the y to get y to the 6th. So it is helpful if you can look to reduce right away, it, it kind of shortens up those steps. And you'll notice that we do get the same answer. So in number eight, um, this one looks pretty complicated. I'm going to recommend reducing it right away. Um, way too much work if we're going to distribute it to everything. So notice that negative one there. That has to get the, the power of the four by itself here. So we've got negative one in parentheses with the exponent outside of the parentheses. And that's going to take you back to your powers of negative one. And that's really important. If you don't have that set up right, you may or may not get the, the correct positive or negative sign in the end. Okay, now we're going to set that aside. Now we're going to work on just reducing. So we've got the j to the fourth over the j to the second. We've got k to the fifth over k to the third. And then the l to the third over l to the first. So it may kind of look like we're just rewriting it, but we're just kind of thinking off to the side here about our variables. So if I reduce those j's, I'd subtract those exponents, I would get j to the second. If I reduce the k's, I would get k to the second. And if I reduce the l's, I would get l to the second. Now let's bring that back together with the original problem here. So I have negative 1 to the 4th, and then I have all of these variables, the j, the k, and the L squared, all of those have to get taken to the fourth power. So I know we kind of have a mess here, but we're just going to rewrite it. So I've got negative 1 to the fourth, and then in parentheses, I've got J to the second, K to the second, L to the second, and that's all taken to the fourth power. So that work that was off to the right there, um, it's not really part of the problem. It's just kind of what you're thinking in your head to reduce before you uh, simplify. So now, negative 1 to the 4th. We know from past lessons that if you take a negative number to an even power, we get a positive 1. So that's just 1. Now we take that 4 and we distribute it to everything, and we're just going to multiply those powers right away. That's j to the 8th, k to the 8th, and l to the 8th. So it turns out that reducing is a lot simpler than actually distributing to all of those bases. So this is the end of part two. You can now go ahead and try the homework associated with this lesson.